When you live in a small town, missing people can be spotted in the blink of an eye. That's why I'm a cop. I'm Ed. This is my partner, Ted. This is our story. 14 people missing from the Centerville area in the last three weeks. What do you think? It's a mystery. Serial killer? I don't think so. Tax evaders? No. Extraterrestrial abduction? Nah. What's your wife think about you working all this overtime? She doesn't say much. Maybe that's because she left you two years ago. Shut up, Ed. Ted was always going on about his broken marriage, but he was my partner and I had work to do. People were going missing all over Centerville, disappearing in thin air, so to speak, all except their shoes. We started noticing a pattern. At the very epicenter of all the disappearances lived a former Olympian, now a recluse, Jeffrey Scott. Under the circumstances, Scott was worth investigating. Jeffrey Scott, this is his house. Ex-Olympian got sent back because he had a nervous breakdown. Interesting, huh? Yeah. You used to have a house like this, didn't you? Back before your wife left you? Shut up, Ed. When was Ted going to stop bringing up his completely destroyed personal life and concentrate on these missing people? Some people can't let go. You were in the Olympics. Jeffrey Scott lived up to his crazy image, and then some. He wasn't going to be any help at this stage, but something about him and his decor attracted my attention. Don't bro! It's my special, bro. After that little episode, Jeffrey Scott became suspect number one in our missing persons case. We decided to ask Scott's neighbors if they'd seen any suspicious behavior. It only took one knock for us to realize that on this side of town there was an epidemic of crazy going around. The kids were cute. However, something was wrong. They seemed upset. You could just tell they were on edge. Those kids were smart. They didn't trust anyone. It was too bad. As we found out, terror had already visited their house. Everyone thinks they are an expert, particularly those that think they can substitute good old-fashioned police work with psychic yes. visions. Who is this? Wait, wait, don't tell me. It starts with a B. This is Detective Captain Ed speaking. Oh, an E. Okay, that's pretty close. Someone is sweeping them away to someplace far, far away. Thank you very much for your information, Miss Foyant. Well, I'll probably pay for that in the other world. But until then, I have work to do. And just like the dog poo at the local pound, it kept piling up. It was starting to stink like an ex-Olympian after a decathlon. Finally, there were more shoes than we had room for. We had to call in the psychic. I hate to say it, but it was the break in the case we needed. It was the special broom. I just knew Jeffrey Scott and his special broom were evil. I couldn't find Ted. He was probably out crying over his Jezebel of an ex-wife. So I went out to Scott's to break in. Something was waiting for me.
are still alive. What's going on? Boy, you seem to be put in a trance by an extraterrestrial. The bloody thing seems to take the form of a common household broom. It seems to have gone rogue on us and transporting anyone into another dimension or someplace. We're going to have to intervene here and contain the situation. Hey, hey, and you're going to save me. Well, that's the part we haven't really worked out yet, but we'll be right on it up until the last minute. When the planes are in position, must run. Sorry. Good luck, old chap. Good luck. When you have to pay alimony on a cop's pay, sometimes you just have to pick up jobs where you can find them. Shut up forever, Ed. <laughs>